So I had a member of my community, Kim here, ask a great question in regards to niching down. And I figured if he asked this question, I believe there might be a few of you out there who also had the same question. So by breaking it down for a quick video here, I think it'll be helpful for you to understand uh, at least the thought process and methodologies that I use, how I would apply it to Kim's situation and overall give him advice to move things forward. But yeah, to kind of share uh, more of my plan, I plan on putting this within my own community as well as LinkedIn and YouTube, and also plan to do more videos like this here in the near future. So if you have any questions you want answered, uh, definitely would love to have you join my community. I'll leave a link to it uh, for you to join and just ask questions like Kim here, because I'm going to break this down uh, and really help all of us understand uh, how to niche down, right? So essentially to go into it, uh, Kim asked, you know, hi, I need to niche down, but I have a tough time making the decision. I'm going to preface with a little context. I am at the early stage of a marketing agency in the construction industry. Zero client sign, zero track record. However, I've had a few cold calls and sales appointments helping me refine the needs of this industry and get my offer closer to a grand slam. Now, to make my life a lot easier, I know it's capital I niche down from construction uh, to, for example, driveway concreters or kitchen remodelers or roofers or architects, right? So great points here. Uh, definitely the more narrow you can get, the better. And I'll go ahead and explain here as to why that is. So say, for example, Kim here is just wanting to focus on construction, right? Have this broken down. Um, there are going to be other people in the industry already that are going to be uh, a first mover. So someone may already be doing um, construction, uh, marketing for construction, right? We'll say mark construction Apologies for the handwriting here. So there's, there could be somebody already that, who's a first mover, right? And he's already got, captured a lot of business or somebody else with a lot of experience, you know, already has a great track record. Kim mentioned that he has uh, no track record, no clients yet. So there are going to be people in this space, um, at least who are going to have a little more experience than him. And then also the final piece here is that unique mechanism, say, for example, like they're using LinkedIn ads or um, they're using YouTube ads, right? Somebody who's doing something a little bit different. So these are the ways that you can stand out. Now, where Kim currently is, what he's actually talking about doing is getting a little more specific to focus on, you know, we'll say driveway, for example. And my gosh, my handwriting is just the best. But basically, we'll say driveway, right? Well, maybe he has the capacity to be uh, a first or early mover there, right? I don't think a lot of people would be targeting maybe specifically driveway to help with marketing, or he can gain experience and a track record very quickly that surpasses other people in the space. And then he could potentially be the only person who's doing LinkedIn ads, for example, for driveway concreters, right? So that's his unique mechanism. So that's kind of uh, helping everybody understand uh, his thought process. He's definitely spot on that getting more specific is great, um, but also making sure that things align with these four pieces. So Kim, for you in particular, and for those out there as well, um, these are the four things that I personally look at when I'm selecting a niche or helping a client select a niche. So it's like, where do you have prior experience? Have you done sales in the past? Have, or maybe have you worked with concreters uh, in the past? Have you worked with architects? I believe you mentioned you, you had uh, to some capacity. Uh, what are you passionate about serving? This is important more long-term like when you're just getting into things, just getting into a business, you may not be super passionate about it, but as time goes on, you learn more about it, you're going to get become more passionate. Uh, financial viability, of course, is important. Uh, you'd mentioned uh, the high ticket piece here, which I'll get into here in a second. And then are they actually accessible? Um, that's also important and something that you bring up here as well. So um, with those pieces, with the with the paint little diagram here and these pieces, um, Definitely can help you all understand Kim's thought process um, and Kim for you as well. Definitely looking into these four pieces is going to be important um, to stick with a niche long term. Now, you can also do something similar to myself to where uh, I'm targeting B2B coaches, consultants. I still have the opportunity to get more specific with that, but I'm niche down enough to where I'm creating attention, uh, creating traffic from coaches, consultants. And then as time goes on, maybe I find that I serve uh, financial coaches or consultants the best, right? So I can focus in more on them as time goes on. So you can also niche down, start construction, get feedback from people, see who needs the most help, which I'll go into here in a second as well, and then narrow down as time goes on. So you definitely have a few opportunities to move forward, but you're definitely going in the right direction, Kian, with that. So 
what you're saying, I've established the following criteria for the niche I will go for. Uh, they're in expansion, or at the very, very least not in a recession. A high ticket product service, 3K and above with a 25% margin. So you can pay for your services, pay for advertising, makes total sense. Uh, standardized products, something that is less than 50% up to the customer's taste. I'm assuming you're meaning at least 50% up to their taste to where it's like, um, you can still kind of templatize things. So that makes total sense there as well. Um, so yeah, these pieces are great. Uh, definitely mention. Uh, so with the in expansion piece, uh, I'd say try to get specific on that for me personally. And this is also my, uh, an avatar sheet for me personally, but I have this, uh, within one of the sections in my classroom, one of my courses that's for free as part of my community. So y'all can download this template and fill it out for yourself. But key in for you, I would try to find a specific revenue range because for me, if I'm targeting coaches, consultants who are making zero, they have different problems. If I'm targeting coaches or consultants who are making 20K, they need help with hiring and scaling. They have different problems. But since I'm primarily targeting coaches, consultants who are inconsistently making 5 to 10K, they have a specific set of problems, right? So basically being able to understand exactly where they're at in terms of a revenue snapshot will be really helpful in actually outlining your offer to speak more to their problems at that specific moment. So I definitely would recommend to try to get more specific on what revenue range you're targeting rather than just an expansion. Um, and then these other pieces sound great. Now, what you're scared of picking a niche that's not used to marketing their products. Um, I've outreached to kitchen remodelers. They rarely work with paid ads, sometimes Google. And most of the time they hardly see the potential or got burnt with Google ads already. Uh, burning through my leads. I'm in France and I want to start locally. However, there aren't a thousand driveway concreters in my region. Uh, going into a niche insanely competitive. If there are other fishes in the pond, it's a sign of vitality. However, I want to deliver results and keep a, a good reputation, especially because I do it in my region. And I've contemplated targeting only bespoke Pergola companies, but the competition is big. So really great uh, thought process here, Cam. You're really doing a great job of kind of breaking things down. So picking a niche that is not used to marketing, there's probably going to be some education involved. Um, I'd say... I personally do a lot of education, not only in the content that I create, but even when I'm on sales calls, like showing them how the process would work, laying out the value for them in front of their eyes and explaining on the call is going to be super valuable. You're not giving away the secrets, you know, people you're selling the implementation, right? So people are still going to want to pay you to help them get there, but you need to help them understand why they're not going to waste their money, help kind of outline your strategy a bit um, and really just break things down for them. I, I find that to be very helpful in the content you create as well as calls to do a little bit of education. Uh, burning through leads, definitely an important part is accessibility. Um, I wouldn't recommend going out maybe and trying to sell to them at first. One of my main strategies is just going out and looking for feedback. And this is one of the, the processes that's broken down uh, in the if you have zero clients section um, in my uh, magnetic avatar blueprint, which will be found in again, my community. Um, I can go ahead and kind of show you that really quick, but come in here. And then once you hit level two, you make an intro post, you can come in here, uh, watch this video and start to break things down and really understand the process. Okay. So I definitely recommend going out and getting feedback first before you necessarily burn through these 1000, trying to sell to them and, and maybe potentially burning them if your offer isn't perfectly aligned with what they want. But by getting feedback, you'll be able to refine your avatar more and more, refine your niche more and more, and then also have your offer reflect their biggest problems and have it actually offer up those solutions. Okay. Now, insanely competitive, you know, that's a good sign. Like you said, if there are other people there, but, um, yeah, you're talking about targeting a certain area where the competition is big. Again, uh, you could have be a first mover. You could have more experience with a track record, or you can be using a unique, unique mechanism, find a way for to differentiate yourself. If you're going to target a certain niche that has high competition or just niche down even further. But again, always recommend getting feedback first to understand who you can actually serve the best. Okay. So biggest roadblocks, uh, zero track record doing some social media for an architecture studio, but it was not paid ads and I was employed by the company. Okay. So architecture studio that stands out to me as you have some prior experience there, which is great. Uh, I have a great offer guarantee taking half the risk. They're trusting, uh, someone with little experience. I get paid once they get paid. So basically I take a percentage on every time client they sign with me. However, it's not a no brainer because they cover the advertising cost, which I do not and cannot guarantee. Sure. 
And it's usually the part where I feel like I'm tricking them. Um, I wouldn't say you're tricking them, but at the same time, you also want to make sure you try to get some track record and you're just honest with the people you're talking to saying, Hey, you'd be my first client. I understand you're maybe taking a little bit of a risk here. Um, here's my guarantee. It's, it's taking a lot, as much of the risk off of me as possible. I'd still need you to come in and actually pay for the ads. I, I feel like it's very rare where the advertiser will be paying for the ads themselves. So I think most people will understand that. I wouldn't get too up in your head about being worried about tricking them. Um, but basically, like I said, getting feedback from people first, telling them, here's what I'm trying to do. Here's who I'm trying to serve. That builds a lot of trust and credibility. People understand where you're at. And those have the potential to actually be your first few clients to get that case study, get that testimonial and start to build your track record. So again, where you're at, definitely recommend just going out and getting feedback. Okay. So, uh, I am planning to go hard on LinkedIn content with my business page. Awesome. Though I need to niche down first. I'm trying to figure out what type of content a bathroom remodeler or roofer could be interested in while still letting them know uh, we're a marketing business. So yeah, I definitely say by going in and developing your avatar, understanding where they're currently at, their pain state, you know, before using your services and then understanding what their goal state is, where they're trying to go, and then basically breaking it down in their top five problems. This is going to be super, super helpful in actually creating content that resonates. You're hitting a pain, you're offering a solution. It's very valuable to a specific niche down market, um, which again, you are fine getting feedback um, through the uh, classroom section here. Definitely recommend Kim. You go ahead and check this out. And for those of you as well who are in a similar place to Kim, um, or even if you're, you're just getting started, you're already established, or you're already doing very well, uh, coming back and building this foundation is incredibly important. So pretty much to finish up here, um, writing this, I feel like I partly answered my own doubts and roadblocks. So I'm going to put it this way. If you have anything to add, please do so. Sure thing. I won't find the magic niche that will solve all my fears. So I'll probably pick the one that fits most of what I'm looking for and go all in. Sure. Great strategy until I've reached out to all leads. I think it's the way to go. Yeah. So I would just say getting the feedback is going to be super important. Just talking with them seeing who you resonate with the most. Um, I had a great revelation the other night where essentially I am the avatar. The person I'm selling to my niche is kind of where I was uh, six months ago, a little bit more than that, right? So the more experience you have uh, when you actually build things out and you're targeting to help somebody, you can help somebody you're a couple steps ahead of. Uh, like you mentioned, people in architecture, um, you know, if there's somebody in that space who is where your company was, at least in terms of revenue and a stage, you potentially help them. You know, you help this company grow. Um, and, you know, you're, even though you're employed by a company, you still had experience there. So that's kind of where my gut's leaning is maybe interviewing more architecture studios because you already have prior experience to be able to share with people and you can show what you did and how you help them grow, even if you're doing um, a little bit of a different strategy, which I believe you mentioned somewhere in here. So, um, no, yeah, definitely writing it out. Uh, definitely helped you answer some of your own questions. So yeah, I wanted to break that down for you, Kim. Um, you're in a great place, great foundation already getting started. You just need to go out there and start getting feedback. I wouldn't necessarily go in and trying to hard sell at this point. You can turn a lot of these conversations where you're gaining feedback into sales opportunities, but making sure you have something that people want is super important. You have the offering there, which you mentioned was solid, but having all the, uh, the mechanisms and making sure that you're actually solving their biggest problems uh, is going to be super important. So uh, if you have any questions about that, Kim, just reach out to me in a DM and I'll be happy to chat with you. And for those of you as well, uh, I hope being able to follow along was, was valuable in understanding uh, where Kim's at, where he can go from here and how he can actually build things out and do so. Um, I'd love to answer more of your questions. So if you'd like to answer, ask a question on my community, uh, I can go ahead and leave a link to my school here in the post. Love to have you join, answer any questions you have, would film a video similar to this and give you as much feedback as possible. Um, but again, I'll leave a link to my school community in the description and I look forward to hearing from you all soon. Have a good one. Take care.